Masechet Yevamot Daf Nun. We begin the fifth pedic, and we are going to study the entire Mishnah right up front, and that'll sp- take most of the Daf. Uh, this Mishnah gives us some basic prin- principles and applies it to lots of different cases, pretty much every permutation. Uh, the basic principles we'll introduce now, and then we'll see how they play out. Uh, so, the principle of the Torah is, if we had only the Torah, we know of two options that a Yavam can do, Yibum or Halitza. Uh, those are necessary and sufficient. Once you do Yibum with one woman, if there are two co-wives, then the other co-wife goes free and cannot do Yibum with both. Similarly, if there are many brothers, only one brother does Yibum, and that's it. The other brothers are exempt. Similar with Chalitza, only one woman needs to get Chalitza from one of the brothers. And any uh, act that is done after that Yibum or Chalitza is uh, null and void, has has um, has no bearing. Okay, however, the rabbis came and they added a couple of other options, and this makes everything complicated. First of all, they said, it's not appropriate for this Yavam to just go and take her just like that and do bi'ah uh, as, as Yibum. It's much nicer, more chivalrous, more respectful to uh, turn this into the normal practice of Kiddushin first and only then consummating with bi'ah of nisu'in. And so therefore they instituted as proper to do a ma'amar, which is like a kiddushin. He gives her uh, some money beforehand, hare'at mikudeshet. And so, although this is, does not have a Torah status, it does have a drabanan status, lehumra, which means once the yavam dis gives a does Ma'amad with, uh, to the Yevama. Why is it called Ma'amad is not clear. Maybe because of Ma'amad, uh, the, the statement of the rabbis, the rabbis said to do so. Um, but in any case, once he, he, he does this, he is now prohibited to her relatives, as if it was Kiddushin, as if they were married, and require a get to get out of it. Um, that's on the one hand. Uh, also, instead, now if someone uh, gives a get, Instead of doing chalitza, although midoraita, the get has no effect. It's the wrong option. But the rabbis were afraid if they, if someone gives a get in this case, since it kind of looks like marriage, and if we say she can just go ahead and get married to a kohen uh, without anything else, um, then people will say that, oh, look, I guess, uh, I guess a, a giving a get doesn't uh, do anything, and someone can marry a kohen after a get. So. Um, therefore, the rabbis came and said, if one gives a get to a yevama, we treat it also lechumra, and uh, this will make her like a divorcee, and therefore he will be prohibited to her close relatives and the other way around, just like a divorcee, and she will be prohibited to a kohen uh, as well. And so all these are lechumra, but not lekula, they do nothing to the deoraita level of, of, of the zika. All right, with those basic principles, let's see how it plays out in every possible combination. Okay, first, a machloket. Rabban Gamaliel Omer, en get achar get. Velo ma'amar achar ma'amar. Velo be'ila achar be'ila. Velo chalisa achar chalisa. So Rabban Gamaliel says that all these things work only once and not twice. Let's say you have a man, uh, one yavam and two yavamot who are co-wives. If he gives a get to the first one, then that uh, is um, a creates a requirement that he will be prohibited to her relatives and the other way around. Um, you still need chalitza, but this get makes her prohibited. But it so he gives a get to the second one also afterwards. The second one he gives has zero effect, right? Because um, the first get does sufficiently say, okay, we are the ones that are doing a separation, and she is already then out of the picture, although someone does need to do chalitza. Also, there's no ma'amad achar ma'amad. Ma'amad, he gives it to, to one co-wife and then to the other. So the first one, that we say, this dirabbanan type of kiddushin takes effect, and he will have to give her a get that's prohibited to her relatives and so on. But the second one, no, because um, she is already... Uh, out of the picture in terms of the ma'amar. And if he does bi'ah to one, yibum, full yibum, and then does bi'ah to the second one, well, once he does yibum, this is an easy case. Um, well, yibum to one, that's it. The other one is becomes uh, goes free, and he's not allowed because that would be his brother's wife. Um, and uh, therefore, this would be a prohibited 
the second one would be a prohibited bi'ah, uh, but what does not require anything. He would not acquire her as a yivama by that bi'ah. Um, so it's a it's a sin, but there's no uh, nothing to do afterwards in terms of uh, you don't have to do chalitza to her to the second one. Velo chalitza chalitza. If he does chalitza to one woman, then that's it. She goes free, and the other goes free. If he gives chalitza to the second to the other one after that, that chalitza does nothing. That also makes a difference. Giving chalitza to the first one makes the first one prohibited to Kohen, and he is prohibited to her relatives and her to his close relatives. But to the second one, that does nothing. That's all the opinion of Rabban Gamliel. Okay, all these cases would apply also if it was uh, two brothers who do these two acts to one woman, right? Oh, same, same thing. Only the first one takes effect and not the second one. However, yes, get achar get. Yeah, they say that if uh, one yavam gives a get to uh, to both co-wives, then he will be prohibited to both of them, uh, bo- both of their uh, relatives. Yes, uh, ma'amar, and if he does this ma'amar to both women, then also he will be prohibited to both relatives. Have to give a get to both of these women to get out of that Rabbanan level. But Chachamim agree on the Doraita options of Alo Achar Be'ila Velo Achar Chalisa Kelum. But everyone agrees, once you do Bi'ah, you do Yibum with one, then doing Bi'ah with the other one is a sin, but does not create any, uh, any marriage and does not require Chalitza. And also, if one does chalitza to one, then the second chalitza is zero because that's it. She's already free to marry anyone else. And this would be like giving chalitza to a random woman on the street would have no effect on them. All right, good. So now we have this fundamental machloket about the two of the same things happening one after the other. And now the Mishnah goes ahead and says kesad. This kesad is not an elaboration on the machloket, but rather the basic principles uh, that we uh, talked about in the first place. Asa ma'amar bivim to ve natan laget sericha mimenu chalisa. So case one, first he does ma'amar to one woman, and then he gives her a get. So the previous case was talking about two women, and now it's just one. So when he does ma'amar uh, to the yevama, so he requires, so now they have some connection, and now giving her a get, yeah, will undo the ma'amar, but still on the doraita level, she requires chalisa. The get does not do anything to the chalisa, and the ma'amar does not replace the original zika, so you still need chalisa after that. Asama Amar Va Khalisa Sirikha Menuget. If he does two things, Ma'amar, and then he does Khalitsa. So you might think, well, maybe the Khalitsa breaks them all together and the previous Ma'amar doesn't matter. No, it's not true. Since he did Ma'amar, which makes him a Deoraita a Dirabanan Kidushin, he needs this uh Dirabanan get to undo the Ma'amar besides the Khalitsa to undo the Zika. If someone does ma'amad, does the kiddushin, and then does ba'al bi'ah as yibum, that is the best way to do it, right? That is why the rabbis encouraged ma'amad in the first place to have a one step. Listen, um, uh, my intention is to take you properly as a yivama. He does that, and then he does, uh, does bi'ah. So that is the ideal conduct that, uh, to perform the mitzvah. Natan get ve'asa ma'amar. If uh, he gives a get first, so now all these are we're going to do all the get ones now. Uh, the get as the first option, and all the others as the second option. Uh, so get, and then he does ma'amar. So then sericha get va'chalisa. He requires a second get because he did ma'amar in the meantime, so he has to do get for that. Meanwhile, all of these actions were only did banan, so he still has to do a chalitza to undo. The original zika. Of course, he cannot do yibum. Once you give a get, that prohibits the person from doing yibum. Um, okay. Natan get uba'al. But let's say he doesn't. He gives a get and then he goes ahead and does bi'ah. On the deoraita level, technically, uh, the get was nothing and so the bi'ah was something. Would you say that this bi'ah is okay? The answer is no. Sicha get vachalitza. He needs both. He needs to give another get because this bi'ah may, may be perceived as a kind of kiddushin. So he needs a get to undo the kiddushin aspect, uh, possible aspect of this bi'ah. And he needs chalitza also uh, because 
because he was not allowed to do bi'ah. So here we have a new concept, which is um, bi'ah that is insufficient, right? A problematic bi'ah, even though it is bi'ah. And on a Doraita level, it would work, but because he gave a get already, and so he cannot do that, so it is an insufficient bi'ah that requires a chalitza afterwards. That ten get vechalats and a chal chalitza kelum, if he gave a get first, so he's, he's like an intention to, to separate. And then Chalitza, then he has a double separation. And once you do Chalitza, that removes everything. So there's no, you wouldn't need anything after Chalitza. Good. If he does Chalitza first, followed by any one of the options, either Chalitza and then Ma'amar, or Chalitza and then Get, or Chalitza and then he did Bi'ah. In all those cases, the chalitza is that comes first is final, as we as we just said. And achad chalitza kelum chalitza because it's the oraita that severs the zika, and then after that, these women are like uh, uh, they have no zika and no uh, obligation. So therefore, all this drabanan ma'amad and get would not uh, take effect on them. Bia would be prohibited, uh, but would take no effect in terms of requiring any uh, anything else after that. Uh, good. So that case is easy. The other Dora case is also easy. O Baal, if he did Bia first on, on anyone, and then Asa Ma'amar, or Get, or Halatz, and then after that he did Ma'amar after the Bia. Well, he's already married to her, uh, or, or gave a Get. Um, uh, well, g- giving a g- giving a get after after that would they are then married uh, totally. So giving get after them would mean that they are no longer married. But that would be a doraita type of get. Um, okay, if he does uh, chalitza after bi'ah, the chalitza is nothing. Chalitza can only get him out of his uh, the relationship before bi'ah, but after bi'ah is nothing. And achar chalitza kelum, and we could as, uh, as say also here, and achar bi'ah kelum, chalitza and bi'ah deoraita, therefore are final, and anything else after that uh, just goes in the regular course as it would in a normal case. Okay, and now, we apply the principles um, to uh, uh, to a case where there's uh, multiple yevamot. So achat yevama achat liyavam echad ve'levam echad ve'achat shete yevamot liyavam echad. All these principles apply whether there was only one yevam, one yevam, and one yevama, and he does multiple actions to that one yevama. Or if it's one Yavam and two Yavamot, which was the Machloket that we started with, and he does one action to one and one action to the other. So now let's see all those cases. Kesad. Asama Amar Bazo Uma Amar Bazo. We saw the Machloket to begin with, and all the Rabban Gamliel says, uh, said, En Ma'amar Acham Amar, and En, um, uh, en Get Achar Get. But this is all following the majority view that says yesh ma'amar acha ma'amar. So therefore, if the one yavam gives ma'amar to both this woman and the other co-wife, then they both take effect. So he has to give a get to each of them to undo the ma'amar, and he gives, has to give do chalitza to one of them to undo the deoraita zika. Ma'amar bazo, the get lazo, the ma'amar with one and get to the other. So then, sircha get vachalisa, he has to give a get to the one he did ma'amar to, the rabbanan level, undo that kiddushin with the rabbanan with the get, and he has to give chalitza to one of them. Ma'amar bazo u ba'al et zo. He did ma'amar with one and then he did bi'ah with the second. Sirichot shetegitin vachalisa. He has to give a get to the one he did ma'amar because you have to undo that the rabbanan kiddushin. And also, uh, the one he did bi'ah with, so that bi'ah has an aspect of a kiddushin, like a kedushin bi'ah, so he has to undo that with another get. Meanwhile, all uh, meanwhile, this bi'ah that he did, because he did it after the ma'amad, once you do ma'amad with one woman, that means you intend to do yibum with her. And you can't do, you're not allowed to do yibum with the other. So therefore, this is an inadequate bi'ah, and he requires chalitza to get out of the whole situation. Ma'amar bazo v'chalas lazo harishona sericha get. He does ma'amar to one, and then chalitza to the other. Great! So the chalitza does undo everything on the Doraita level, but still, that ma'amar is lingering, because he has that Rabbanan uh, connection to her, a kiddushin to her, so therefore he needs a get 
for the second one. Okay, good. So that takes care of those uh, cases. Now, get lazo veget lazo. He gave both of them a get. Sirichotemenu chalitza. One of them still needs chalitza because the get is only a derabanan level and there is still a doraita zika. Get lazo uba'al et zo. Siricha get vachalitza. He gave one to one a get. And uh, so, and the other one, he uh, did, uh, he did bi'a. So once he gives one a get, so now he has intending, he's going to go through and give her chalitza. He can't go and do bi'a and do yubum with the other one. So this is another, another deficient uh, type of bi'a. So he has to give another get to the one that, to, to, to the one that he did bi'a with, because that bi'a makes, creates a connection, a kiddushin type of connection. And he has to also do chalitza with one of them because he, he has the bi'ah that, that he did was not sufficient as a full yibum, and so he has to undo the zika fully with a chalitza. Get lazo ma'amar bazo, sericha get va chalitza. He gave one a get and the other ma'amar. So he has to do give a get to the one he did ma'amar to, and both of these are only derabanan uh, actions, so he still requires chalitza to get out of the whole situation. Uh, get lazo ve chalas lazo. This is the other way around. He gave one a get and the second one he gave then he does not have to, uh, not, this is not the other way around, this is a different case, get and uh, chalatz. Uh, then he, um, he did a drabanan separation to one and full separation to the other. Well, this chalitza is, is final and there's no need to do anything else for the first to the first one to whom he gave a get. All right. Now, up to this point, the Mishnah has had a perfect structure. And uh, I want to review it before we go on, because there's going to be a doubling that might, will be a little bit confusing if we don't look at it this way. We started off with an opening machloket about a case of this actually, this machloket would apply either to one Yavam giving to two women, or two brothers, two, yev, two Yevamim, giving to one woman. Uh, is there get achar get and ma'amad achar ma'amad? Rabbi Gamliel said yes. Chachamim said, Rabbi Gamliel said no. Chachamim said yes, there is. Uh, it is if the second one is effective. And we're going to follow Chachamim for the rest of it. So it was good that we introduced with this machloket. Then the Kesad, the Kesad is not describing the case of the Machloket, but rather going to the simple case of one Yevama and one Yavam, where he does two actions to the same person. And first we do the three cases of Ma'amar first, followed by Yibum Chalitza Bi'a. And then if he does Get first, followed by Ma'amar Ba'al Chalitza, and then we, those are all different circumstances, outcomes, so they have to be listed separately. And then if he does chalitza first, no matter what happens after, it doesn't matter. Or does bi'a first, no matter what happens after, it doesn't matter, because after chalitza, there is nothing. Now this phrase, after chalitza does nothing, could have been up here, but in fact, after bi'a also, there is nothing. But it doesn't say that yet, because it's not true in all cases, as we'll see. Now that we had all those four categories, we got to the next um, case of two Yevamot, one Yevam and two Yevamot. And here again, if Ma'amad is first, followed by, see in this case, because there's two Yevamot, it's possible that there is Ma'amad to one and Ma'amad to the other. Ma'amad to one and it gets other. Ma'amad and then uh, Ba'al, Ma'amad and then Chalitza. And then we do the four cases where Get comes first. And now what we're up to, is a case where he does chalitza first to one woman and then anything else to the other woman, bia first to one woman and anything else to the other woman. So let's see those cases. Chalatz ve chalatz, chalitza to one woman, chalitza to the other. Or chalatz, or he gives chalitza to one of the, one of the co-wives, and then vasa ma'amad, or natan get, or ba'al. Uh, all in all those cases, because he did chalitza first to one of the women, that breaks the zika altogether. Everything else he does after that has no validity. And similarly, all ba'alu ba'al. He did bi'at to one woman and then bi'at to the co-wife. The first one is effective in making that his wife. The second one is a prohibited uh, zinut relation, but it has no effect. There is no zika, further zika there. He doesn't have to give the second one a get or anything like that. 
או בעל ועשה מעמד, נתן גט וחלס, he did be out to one, good, that חליץ, that יבום works, and then to the second one, he did something else, מעמד, or גט, or חליצה, there's no effect one way or another, and אחד חליצה כלום, but once again, we only say there's no חליצה, that not, after chalitza, there's never anything that you need to do. Even though it's true that after the bi'ah, in all these cases, because bi'ah is first, also there's nothing else to do. All right, so that concludes all those cases. And then we add another, it should be a separate paragraph. Ben yavam echad yevamot, ben All these cases where you have two actions uh, apply, whether there is one yavam doing it to two yevamot, or whether it is two yevamot, uh, two, two, two ye- yevamin, two men, that are doing this and that to one woman. Uh, one does uh, chalitza and the other one does chalitza. Whatever the category, whatever it is, the case is, uh, the outcome will be the same. All right, and now the next part repeats the case that we just had, uh, the, these cases here of chalats. Why is it repeated? I'll show you in the outline. Um, these cases here, except for the chalas, chalas, and ba'ba'al, it repeats the chalas first followed by anything, and the ba'al first followed by anything else. It's repeating it because it wants to make a clarification, and that there is a machloket about this. Uh, so let's see what the clarification is. Chalatz ve'asama amar v'natan getu ba'al. If he does chalitza first, um, with one, one woman or one of the brothers does chalitza first, and then someone else, uh, one of the other brothers does ma'amad or gives a get or does bi'ah afterwards. Uh, he's not supposed to do bi'ah, but it will have no effect. Or if or someone, one brother does bi'ah first and then another brother does ma'amad or get or chalitza afterwards, and achad chalitza kelum ben batechila ben ba'emsa ben basof. So regarding the first case, after you do chalitza, then, it, then there's nothing else to do after. And it doesn't matter whether the chalitza was done first, or was done in the middle, or was done the last thing. After chalitza, there is nothing to be done. We did see one exception to that. When he does ma'amad first, and then chalitza, you still need to get to undo the ma'amad. All right, but that's on the Dirabanan level to undo that. But on the Doraita level, in terms of the main zika, chalitza breaks anything that you could have possibly done before. Um, okay, except, of course, for bi'ah. Once bi'ah, then they're fully married and there's no zika, right? But the point is, if there's still a zika, the chalisa breaks all other actions. Ve'ha but it's not true the other way around. If he does bi'ah first, bizmanchi betechila en achare ha'kelum. When the bi'ah is done first, then that then nothing else matters because the pro- opening bi'ah is a proper yibum, and that yibum undoes any zika to her, to any brothers, to anybody, any other co-wives. And that's all. Any other actions after that have no effect on any zika. However, if he does certain actions before the bi'ah, then they can make that bi'ah an invalid one. If he gives a get first, for example, then that get first will mean that he can't do yibum. He's not supposed to do yibum with her. And that that yibum that he does is an inadequate one. And therefore, he will still be required to do something else after to break the zika. He'll need a chalitza again after. That is the difference between the fine uh, chalitza and bi'ah chalitza uh, breaks everything no matter where it is. Bi'ah only if it's first. Um, Good. However, this uh, statement here is... Uh, the majority, but subject to machloket, Rabbi Nechemia Omer, Achat be'ila ve'achat chalisa ben batechila ben ba'ensa ben basov, en achareha kelum. Rabbi Nechemia says that the bi'ah and as the same as the chalitza, and whether the bi'ah is done first or in the middle or at the end, it breaks the zika no matter what. Um, if there was something that was uh, amad or a get was done first, and the bi'ah, the bi'ah comes and creates a deoraita level zika, deoraita level marriage yibum, and therefore there is no uh, other zika to any other brother or any other co-wife. And so Rabbi Nechamiyat seems to not have this concept of an inadequate, uh, insufficient bi'ah. Uh, there, the bi'ah is always full.
like Chalitza, is always full. And that is the end of the Mishnah. So what we can see here is the full outline has almost a chiasm, a machloket at the beginning and a machloket at the end. And uh, two main cases, either one yevama or two yevamot, with each of the subdivisions. The two yavams is just uh, another, yes, yet another um, variation of what came before. But in red, we see the ongoing refrain, and achal chalisa kelum, even though it was talking about where Bi'ah was also in the case there. And then achal chalisa kelum, and uh, even though this was a case after Bi'ah, and so really after the Bi'ah also was nothing, but it doesn't want to say after Bi'ah there's nothing because uh, that is more complicated. So we have four times it says, and then it waits till the end to say, oh yeah, we, uh, we, we told us that a few times, after Chalisa, there's nothing because it doesn't matter where it is. But I couldn't say that it was true for Bi'ah because Bi'ah, it was only true when Bi'ah was, in, was first, not, but not when it was second or third. And uh, therefore, that one is more complicated. It is subject to Machloket. According to Chamiyah, it doesn't matter. According to the Tanakama, it does matter. All right, so you see why we had to bring this entire pedic of Mishnah right up front because uh, it is all one unit and uh, you can't under really understand it without seeing the flow of it. And we'll now begin the Gemara discussion of uh, some of the details. The Gemara will first qualify the opening machloket. Ad kan lo pelige ela beget achar get umamar achar maamar. Rabban Gamliel and the sages only disagreed when uh, someone gives a get to one, let's say one Yavam gives a get to one co wife and another get to the other wife. In that case, Rabban Gamliel said, um, and a get a hard get because he he figures either way if the get is effective in undoing the in undoing the zika, um, uh, perhaps even on a biblical level according to the Bangam Liel, then the first get will be effective and the second get won't. And if on the other hand the get is not effective, then it won't be effective on the first and not on the second. Either way, the second one, the second get has no effect. Um, and he would say something similar to Ma'amar, Ma'amar, Ma'amar um, then uh, creates a quasi boom with the first and the second one is nothing, or it does nothing to either, and then therefore the second one certainly is fine. Al Chachamim, however, said that it works on a Dirabanan level or kind of quasi uh, get uh, to the first, which does not fully undo the Zika no matter what, and therefore the second one. Uh, is in fact a valid get according to the Chachamim, um, not not a fully valid get, but is a valid enough that will be confusing and uh, therefore will prohibit the um, this the the avam also to the relatives of the second and so to mama the first mama is only a quasi type of kiddushin and does not fully create any type of yibum and therefore there is still a zika with the second and therefore the mama will be a dirabanan type of kiddushin also with the second and that will also require a get afterwards and prohibit the relatives to each other. All right, all that made sense. Aval get echad bibama, umamar echad bibama mehane. Everyone agrees, even Rabban Gamliel, that if he does yibum to one of the co-wives and ma'amar, uh, sorry, gives a get to one of the co-wives and ma'amar to the other co-wife, then everyone will agree that both have some effectiveness and he's going to need to uh, give a get to the one that he gave ma'amar to to undo the ma'amar and he's going to have to do chalitza with one of them to break the zika. Um, in uh, the Chachamim's logic, for sure this would be true. And, and even in Rabbi Gamliel's logic, as he could be that the get was effective, but maybe not, and we're not sure if it's effective or not. If it's not effective, uh, then the ma'amad would be effective, and that has to be uh, somehow accounted for. And therefore, since we don't know uh, which one, either or both, are effective, we have to get rid of all of the combinations. And it's not like where there's a get achar get, where we know either the first one is effective and if the second one's not, or if gets are not effective, then neither are. Here they are different uh, subtypes. And so everyone would agree that you'd have to give here, in this case, a get and chalitza. Okay, now that we've uh, clarified that, um, now the we're going to get back to the most basic question of why did the rabbis uh, institute the this uh, uh, ma'amad and get uh, problems in the first place and require anything if in on the Doraita level 
these uh, these do, uh, have no effect on uh, yet on the yibum situation. Uh, so I gave one interpretation before in the Mishnah. Here's a slightly different one. Why did the rabbi say that giving a get to a yoyevama uh, is effective to the extent lichumra? To the extent that uh, she would be prohibited to his relatives and he to hers, mishum demahane be'alma, because a get in general in the regular case of marriage does break the marriage and cause prohibitions, uh, continued prohibitions of close relatives and cause her to be prohibited to a kohen. So because they're so similar in what they do that they're really confusing. Diamat lab mahane. If we say that a get does not do anything to a yevama. So people will say, well, in general, a get is something that usually separates uh, couples, and chalitza also separates couples, and since a get does not do anything uh, to uh, make them totally separate, in the case of, um, in the case of chalitza, uh, so therefore, chalitza also does not completely separate them. And so then people will say, well, see, the get didn't work there. So Halitza also will not do anything for a Yavam, yavam and Yavama. And then they will come to do Yibum after Halitza. That is prohibited because the Pasuk says, if he refuses to build his brother's house, then he has to forever refuse. Uh, and so they will think that Halitza doesn't actually do anything because get doesn't do anything. Therefore, we say get does something, so that uh, at least the Chumra, so that people will know that Halitza does something and uh, prohibits any yibum afterwards. All right. How can people say that this kiddushin for a, for a yivama does create a semi marriage and makes them prohibited to each other, each other's relatives, um, and require a get afterward afterwards? Well, because kiddushin in general, we're with regular uh, just a man and a woman. Not uh, since that kiddushin does work. If we said that kiddushin, this kiddushin does not do anything to a yavam and yavama, amre ma'amar liknot to be aliknot umedekamar lo mahane bi'a na me lo mahanya ve'ata lemival achar be'ila. Because um, uh, if we say that kiddushin, this ma'amar does not work at all, then people will look at this and say, well, the ma'amar is supposed to uh, bring people together like a kiddushin, and it doesn't work. And bi'a is supposed to bring people together in a regular case, bi'a does nisu'in. And since that, this first doesn't work for a yavam and yavama, maybe the bi'a also does not create a marriage for a yavam and yavama. And so this is, this doesn't work, then bi'a also doesn't work. And then they will do a bi'a after another bi'a, meaning uh, that uh, one uh, a, a yavam will do yibum to one woman, and they'll think that that doesn't create a marriage, because look, uh, kiddushin doesn't, and then they'll go and do yibum with the other with the other co-wife, uh, even though that is prohibited, because once you build one house, you cannot build another house. And so we want to avoid that confusion. So we say, you know what, just like with kiddushin, once you do kiddushin with one, then uh, another cannot take her. Uh, it, it creates a marriage. So to be ah, here will create a marriage. Okay. And how come the rabbis had they made this category of bi'a, which on a Doraita level creates a full marriage with the Yavama, but in some cases, for example, if he gave a get first and then bi'a, they said this bi'a is uh, insufficient bi'a, and therefore it's required to get a chalitza afterwards. Um, uh, so how come they said yesh achare hakul met? You still have to do something after that bi'a. Well, here's the reason. Amre i bi'a achar geti. So if it's a case where be, yeah, someone gave a get first, and once you give a get, so then that's like rejecting uh, the house, and you can't build a house after you reject it. So gezera bi'a achar get mishum bi'a achar chalitza. The reason why they said that bi'a is insufficient is because we make a gezera. From a case of bi'a after get to a case of bi'a chad chalitza, the after chalitza, then for sure that's it. The zika is broken, and you cannot build the house after you reject it. And so we want to prohibit after get, so that people will know that after chalitza also is prohibited. Now bi'a chad ma'amar he. The other case of a deficient bi'a is if a man a yavam did ma'amar to one wife 
and then bi'ah to the other. Once you do ba'amar to one wife, indicating that you're going to do the yibum with her, so then you cannot build two houses, so that prohibits the other. Why do the rabbis say that? Because that's kind of confusing with the case of um, one yavam who did bi'ah with one woman, and then the second one, the second co-wife, is prohibited. And so we want to make sure people know that if we allow the ma'amar to one and then bi'ah to the other, they might think bi'ah after bi'ah is also allowed, so we prohibit this, so they won't be confused with the other. All right. And how come the rabbi said that after a chalitza pesula, this we learned a number of dapim ago, that a chalitza is only a full chalitza if there is also an option to do yibum. You could have done yibum, but you do chalitza, that's a full chalitza. But if in a situation that you could not do yibum, and then for whatever reason you couldn't do yibum, and then you do chalitza because you need to, that chalitza is, does not have a full power of chalitza. Okay, yet, even though that is true in other cases, how come the rabbis here said that we don't take that into account and after the chalitza, you don't do anything afterwards. The chalitza breaks, breaks it all. On a daoraita level, it breaks the zikah totally. How come? Because what kind of gezerah are you going to make? What do we have to be worried about? Should we require a chalitza after someone gives a get? Um... And should we, should we say, oh, this uh, chalitza is not sufficient after a get, uh, because uh, chalitza came after second, and it's a chalitza pistula, because you can't do a full chalitza. Should we say that you need something else after that, um, because someone make, may, may make a mistake and think that after chalitza you can do chalitza? Well, so do it. You could do chalitza a hundred times and there's no harm done. There's no prohibition. It's just a waste of time. Uh, but uh, there's nothing to make a gezera that it will come to anything terrible. Uh, Mishum chalitza achar bi'ah, or did so you say, well, maybe there's another case of a chalitza that is not such a good chalitza, is um, doing, is after ma'amad. You did ma'amad with one woman, and then you do a chalitza with the co wife. And so, in that case, since you could not have done yibum with that co wife, because you already did ma'amad to the other one, so should we say that that is an insufficient chalitza and we should require uh, another chalitza, right? So, what are you worried about? Uh, that you're going to confuse ma'amad with a, with bi'ah. And so you're going to say, Mishum chalisa achar bi'ah, atu chalisa achar ma'amad, limila ba'ya get le ma'amado. Wait a second, even after ma'amad, we also require that the person give a get, right? No matter what the order is, to undo that ma'amad. So you have to give a get. So therefore, chalisa achar bi'ah name, ba'ya get le bi'ato. If someone did a bi'ah with one, and then uh, chalitza with the other. So that chalitza was ineffective because it was after the bi'ah. So the bi'ah was already the yibum. And if a guy wants to get out of the bi'ah, so we'll give a get. And that's totally fine. So there's nothing to worry about since we require a get after every ma'amad, uh, unless the ma'amad ends up with yibum and then they're married. Well, still, then to get out of that, you need a get. But since we, so since we require a get after every ma'amad, so we will also require a get after every bi'ah. And so if there's an intervening chalitza, it will not add or take away anything and no harm is done. And so we've seen oh, lots of different permutations of cases, but essentially it's just a few basic rules that we are applying to each different permutation.